Hi there, this is Jenny from the Sewing Palace in Helena, Montana. We're on month three of our Saturday sampler, Santa's Village Quilt Along. Month three is a pretty simple block. It's right behind me here, and it is made up of some basic units. This right here is a checkerboard unit made out of one and a half inch squares. In the center, we have a pinwheel unit that is made out of half square triangles. And then right here on the star points, those are flying geese units. And then we have some basic blocks to fill in there. The trickiest part of this block is making sure your flying geese units are consistent and you have the right color on the right side. So let's get started. Let's get started with collecting a couple things you'll need to make your block. You'll need your pattern, which is Santa's Village. You'll also need some fabrics. We chose four different fabrics, a background, a green, a red, and a gold, but you can go with whatever you want. You just want contrast between whatever's going to make up your pinwheel in the center. You'll also want a friction pen to do some marking, a rotary cutter, a woolly mat, which we have located here, an iron, small iron, and then a couple specialty rulers. I'll show you those here in a second. We also use a starch alternative, which is a combination of best press and terial magic. We use two thirds of this, one third of this, and mix it in this mister bottle and we make magic press. So that's what we use for that. Don't want to forget a really good quality thread, which is orophil thread. And last but not least, we're going to use two specialty rulers to make this block a little bit differently. There is a flying geese ruler from Block Block. It's a two inch by four inch finished flying geese. And then we're using a half square triangle ruler from Block Block. And it's a two and a half inch uh, unfinished square up or a two inch finished is what it'll be. We're going to start with our pinwheel block. This is made up of four half square triangle units an A and a B fabric that contrast. And those units finish at two inches. That means when they're cut, they're two and a half. A couple ways you could do it. You could follow the directions, which is cutting two and seven eighths. And then you'll sew them similarly. When you open them up, they should measure two and a half. You could also cut them a little bit bigger and trim them down using the block lock method, which is what I will show you. So the directions say to cut two and seven eighths. I cut two pieces that were a little bit bigger. These are three and a quarter inches. I pre-starched them with Magic Press, and then with a friction pen, I marked from point to point to know that center line, and then I'm gonna go sew it. We're gonna get ready to sew our half square triangle block. This will yield two half square triangles. I'm gonna sew down the center line with a quarter of an inch from each side of that seam allowance. I have a Bernina presser foot that is a quarter of an inch presser foot. This happens to be 37D, which is a quarter inch on each side. And the best way to get great accuracy with sewing small seams or diagonal seams is to use a straight stitch needle plate underneath. It just has a single hole for your needle. Very, very accurate. So I'm gonna sew on each side of those lines with a quarter of an inch seam. I've sewn on each side of the line, so that will yield one on this side and one on the other side. I'm going to take it to my rotary mat and cut right down the center of it to yield those two. And then I will go press using my woolly pressing mat and press towards the darker of the two fabrics. For this combination, I'm going to press towards the red. We're going to square up our half square triangle unit using the block lock two and a half inch square half square triangle ruler. So you're going to lay it down on the seam. Right now I have the seam facing towards you. This was my dark fabric and I can read the ruler saying block lock. So when it's locked in that diagonal should come right to the point on each side and that is the correct way to have it locked in. If you have it opposite it'll just be a quarter of an inch off. So if you just use that rule of thumb that you can face the seam towards you and be able to read the ruler, you'll be right every time. Now I'm going to square up all the way around this and it should measure two and a half. And the finished size is two inches. It will go up into my block and make part of a pinwheel. Now you're ready to start assembling your pinwheel block once you make four of these. This is how it will look in your quilt and you want to make sure that you get it placed correctly so that you have a pinwheel forming. So you can kind of see that spiraling pinwheel. 
we're ready to work on our flying geese unit. So that is this unit right here. It is made up of three different fabrics, your background, your A and your B fabric. So you need to be consistent about when you're making this unit so that the A, if the triangle is facing down like so, that your A is always on the right side. You don't want to make a mirror image of that because it won't form the correct block in the center or you'll just have a creative change to your block. We'll get started making our flying geese unit, which is this unit here. If you want to make it traditionally, you'll follow the directions. The finished size is a two inch by four inch finished flying geese unit with the A always being on one side and the B obviously being on the opposite side. If you want to do the block lock method, you cut those pieces a little bit larger and you use a square up ruler, the two inch by four inch finished uh, flying geese block lock ruler. So the cuts for that is your background is two and three quarter by four and three quarter. Your A and your B fabric are each two and three quarter inch square. So you'll get started by cutting those pieces. We're going to make four flying geese units one at a time because you need to be careful about which side the A fabric is going to be on and make sure they're consistent. Therefore, you can't do the no waste method, which is four at a time, because half of your units would have the A on the left and half would have it on the right. So we're going to do it one at a time, which will have a little bit of waste. What you're going to do is you're going to lay your A fabric down. You're going to get a straight edge and a friction pen, and you're going to mark from point to point. And the important part about making a flying geese unit is to make sure you start right on that point and come off on the point. So you're gonna sew right on that line. This is when a straight stitch needle plate is very helpful and you'll sew right there. This piece here is going to be waste. So let's sew that real quick. I've made my flying geese unit by sewing from point to point. And then for the waste piece right here, I moved over a half inch and I sewed another seam. And what that yields is a tiny little half square triangle that I can go in my scraps at a later point. But you're gonna trim those apart and fold this out and there is half of your goose. You'll press that and add the other piece. Let's do that next. Our red is pressed that way and now we're ready to add our gold. You'll lay the gold piece in the corner, matching up the raw edges. Take a straight edge, mark from point to point and sew directly on that line. If you wanna sew extra scraps, move a half inch away and you'll end up with one of these cute little half square triangle units. Flying geese unit ready to trim down. We're gonna trim it down using the block lock ruler with a cutting mat and the two inch by four inch finish block lock ruler. The beauty of this ruler is it has a quarter of an inch seam here and those points are also squared up all in one step. So you need to make sure it's the correct size, lock it into the seam and trim all the way around it. And you will have a perfect flying geese unit when you are all done with perfect corners and a quarter of an inch reveal at the top. How cool is that? You'll then lay it into your block and it should look like that. You'll form kind of a parallelogram with one of the colors here and here and then you'll make the other three units. You'll have the pinwheel in the center, so this row together, so this row with the flying geese, flying geese and the pinwheel and another row and the center of your block will be completed. Next is the checkerboard. We are on to the checkerboard border. So it is made up of a light and a dark. Out of this one I've chose a cream and a green and those strips are cut one and a half inches by length of fabric. So this is the length of the fabric and you want to tr trim down to get one and a half of a light of a light and a dark and you need to do that two times to get enough of those units. So once you have them trimmed you're going to sew them together which is called strip piecing. So you're taking two strips and you're sewing them together so that you have one on one side and one on the other. When you go to press these you want to be conscientious of pressing and making sure that seam stays straight. If you do a lot of ironing back and forth you might get some wave in the fabric so you really want to finger press it open and then as you're pressing just be real slow and not back and forth so that that line stays, stays straight and then we'll trim it down into smaller units. We're going to trim down this strip set unit into one and a half inch strip sets. So you want to make sure when you're trimming you have the seam down the center running down a line on your ruler. 
and that will keep you straight. You want to make sure each time you trim you have a nice straight edge and if your ruler slips or moves just square it up and trim it down again so that you have a nice straight edge. So I have a straight edge and now I'm going to trim to one and a half inches so I'm going to play with my ruler until I find a line that I like that I can see well going down the center so this is going down the center and I'm measuring one and a half inches over and it should be parallel on each end top and bottom and running down that center seam again just three square up if things slip or slide and you'll keep just working your way down the strip until you cut enough units to make your checkerboard when you sew those together they'll go like this so we'll do that next we're ready to make our checkerboard border you're going to cut up so that you have 40 of these little guys and when you sew them together they're going to go alternating light versus dark and you'll sew them in sets of two at a time when you put those together you really want to be conscientious to lock those seams in so that they are alternating and they kiss right in the middle if you have those nested really well when you're all done and you open it up this seam will be straight across so that's what nesting is. Let's get ready to sew it. All right, we have our little four patch units. You're gonna make several of those. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units. So eight will go on the top, eight will go on the bottom, and then you'll put 12 here and 12 here. When I start to sew these units together, I would sew this to this, this to this, then this to this, so you have a row of eight of them. Do that twice for top and bottom, and then do the same thing to get 12 per side, and you will have a completed block here shortly. You have your completed block. Here it is. Congratulations, you did it. This is Jenny from the Sewing Palace signing off in Helena, Montana.